just for the rest of the board, uh, Peter is not feeling well, so he couldn't make it. He, he did give a message to Dan and I. <clears throat> and Jerry is at Disneyland <laughs> with his sisters. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I told him, I said, uh, you know, I guess it's only Disney World that if you're a winner in the MVP, you get to go to Disney World. I said, when we wiped out on uh, incorporation, I mean, how can you go to Disneyland? Right. <laughs> anyway, okay, first item is uh, approval of the agenda. I have a motion to approve the agenda. I have to move. I second. Okay, I, I want to add an item under new business which is the final methodology report. It's not going to require any decisions tonight, but we'll talk about that for a few moments when we get to it after the ordinance reading. <clears throat> uh, does anybody have any other questions or anything they want to bring up in regard to the agenda? If not, all in favor of accepting the agenda with that one change, say aye. 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 Guests, there are none. Public comments, there are none. Board questions, comments, and discussion. Review of the minutes of October 20th, 2022. Motion to accept the minutes. I move to accept the minutes. I'll second. So we have the minutes uh, before us. And I'd like to add on the under employees present, Von Ed, since she took the minutes. And then you said that Lincoln is a spelling correction, I think you said. Yeah, she's missing the end. Excuse me, yeah. She's missing the end on Lincoln. Um, and I was wondering, go ahead. No, go ahead, please. If we should add camera on folks that are present. She's under guests. Under I, three. Yeah. Should be. Oh. Wow. I missed that. <laughs> it's all right. I was looking at that earlier. I didn't even go all the way down the end of the page. Very good. So be it. Okay. It, on uh, page three, I was thinking under item eight, uh, the, the last line of that paragraph where it says, Neetart's pump station force main project would still be more appropriate? Under pump stations? Yeah. Where it's the second word under force main, second word on the last line there. And it currently reads uh, main <coughs> project and put in its next month's report board packets. I think I'm on, I'm on the wrong one. You're up top here. Am I um, on the wrong one? No, no. Which? Right here. So, oh, oh. I was down here under pump stations. Oh, I'm sorry. I was yeah. on the top page three. Yeah. So I, on the bottom, uh, oh. item eight. Yeah, item eight. Main project and put in. Rather than project, spill. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I don't know, halfway down there under the collection system, uh, at this time, Mello wanted, half, uh, wanted to also let the board know that West Tech has already started working on modifying the district's emergency response plan. And I was thought of adding as part of DEQ's required corrective action to the August 5th, 2022 NETART spill. I can give you that. And is that? Sounds good. It clarifies it just a little bit. Uh, 
Then on page four, under new equipment, uh, purchased line three, and needs replaced, needs to be replaced, probably. Is that? Needs replaced. I don't know. Whatever you all think. Just didn't seem to read quite right to me, but I don't know. Needs. I think it means the same thing. Cooking. Well. Which okay. paragraph is that? Second? Uh, third line. And, and right it now it reads, no longer be certified and needs replaced. I, mean, I don't have an issue with it, but you, what do you want to change to? Well, to be replaced. Oh, I get it. I'm, I'm fine either way, if we can change it. To you don't be. have to change it. If you're happy with it, I'll just cross it out. Programming. I don't know if that's spelled right. Um, the unit has 4,022, including programming. I think there could be two M's in it. Oh, okay. Now you got more. No, I, <laughs> it, it, it seems like it should have two. We got. So this is green. Yeah, two okay. Okay. All right. And those were the ones that I thought. Very good. <laughs> Knit noise, I guess. Anybody have any others they want to bring up or suggestions? If not, uh, all those in favor of accepting the minutes with the changes we discussed, say aye. Aye. Just leave that over there for that longer part. Okay, October 31st, 2022, financial statements for a review of all funds. Motion to accept the financial statements. I'll move. I'll second. Open for discussion. On page seven, I went over this with John a little bit, but on the general fund at the top, if you want to know how the user fees are covering, uh, on, in the general fund, the user fees are covering the uh, system, just have a look at where you see Umqua Bank and Investment, LGIP. We're able to put money into that when we're not running short of money uh, during each month. So what that does is it carries you when like you have extra expenses or freight payers don't pay and you run short a month, then you'll see that $91,000 fluctuate. When you see it getting closer to zero, that means that it's not covering the expenses for any of those two reasons. And refresh me, the LGIP is a state uh, account? Local Government Investment Pool. Okay. Local government yeah. investment pool. Yeah, right. so we get interest on that. So we don't like to keep um, an abundant amount of money just in the checking. So we'll transfer out and get some interest for that. Uh, 
It's just it's just uh, something for the board that can kind of just see where you're at financially each month, health wise. Okay. Any uh, additional discussion? If not, all in favor of accepting the uh, financial statements as written, say aye. 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 Board audit and account payable. questions okay. <clears throat> next item is the district report okay you probably have seen page one got a little heavier loaded this month than usual um, so we started training Brian started training the Operators on running the, uh, the closed circuit TV inspection equipment. Um, we've had phone calls from the owner of a couple of lots on Mina Way, which is just as you go up Grand, and it's on the south side of Grand. Uh, discovered that a sewer extension and sewer system was put in, we're estimating by the files, probably back around 2000. Um, it was never ran through the district. It was never approved. Uh, the guys inspected it. It looks good. I mean, it looks fine. We're not going to make them tear it out. But we found that, but we did find this uh, sewer extension to service three lots with ejector pumps, private ejector pumps. So these lots can be hooked up in. And to, uh, this, the gentleman that brought it brought me the drawings, which I've never seen before. Of course, they're not stamped and approved. That's why the district has never seen them. But they don't quite match what's down there. That's why Brian did the inspection of that of that area. And so I've given all the information to the engineer. So when we update this map, okay. we'll be able to add that in. Um, you'll still get paid the same SDC fees as people hook to them now. But that's four more lots now that are able to, to hook to the, into the sewer system. With, um, with the gravity fed or no there's one that looks potentially to be gravity uh, and three of them will be uh, served through pressure lines inch and a half pressure lines through private private ejector units that's what three of them would be serviced on okay. so something else that has come up recent and uh, it's going to be actually an emergency fix um, the county on, on Pearl Street, where we have that belly in the line, yeah. that has to be fixed so that the new home that's built there can hook to it. Right now, we can't tap into it. If it tries to tap in, sewer's gonna run out right into their house or you know, onto the ground. So I've had to rescind the letter that they can hook it up, but now we have to fix the line because the county's gonna go in uh, my understanding is they're supplying the parts to the homeowner to fix the, um, the, the storm drainage. So we have to get in there first because we're deepest. We need to get that fixed so we can get out of the way so they can come in and do their storm drainage repair. Um, this started about two years ago and it kind of just got stopped. Uh, I was unfortunately left out of the email chains that, uh, a contractor was working with the county on this. So of course the contractor thinks I just didn't care and didn't show up to meetings and didn't respond, but if he had looked up, he saw it was not in the email chain. 
find any of it. So I've already contacted Vince at Emory and Sons Construction. Uh, they're the only ones that really that I know of that have the equipment to go that deep and shoring and provide all the safety equipment and the manpower and the parts. So what we're going to do is he's going to go in, go back to where the belly and the line starts, and I'm going to cut it off right there. This is a simplified version. Going to cut it off right there and then lay in a new line over top and then bring it into the manhole at the, at the, um, at the downhill slope. So that's the one I've showed John and Jerry's got standing water in it because the manhole has sunk down a little bit. What they'll do is back all that out. They'll pour a new manhole floor in it, record it, and they'll bring that line back straight again. And then we can allow that homeowner to, to hook up to it. I have no idea at this point what it's going to cost because this is all done under emergency. So there isn't going to be much ground cover over this pipe. We, we like a minimum of 30 inches of ground cover. In one section, we don't think we're even going to have 12 inches. So I've had to upgrade the pipe from the thinner PVC 3034 to a C900, like a pressure line you would see for a, for a water system with restrained joints. So that uh, if a bucket or somebody's out there working in the road, they, they, won't break the, they won't break the sewer line as easily. I'm not saying anybody can't break the sewer right. line, but this gives us the most protection. The only thing, I, I have a meeting with the county here uh, on the 28th at 10 a.m. and what they will probably um, have us top that last foot, or at least several inches, and around the pipe is what's called CDF. It's called C Controlled Density Fill. Think of it as kind of just a light duty concrete. So if somebody gets in there with, a, with an excavator and they hit that, they'll know they hit something, but it will chip away. So if we have to go back in and fix it sometime in the future, it's not encased in hard concrete, so. But it will be on. It's it's going to be under under an emergency, under emergency repair. Um, if I had to guess, it's going to be. I would say probably around fifty thousand, fifty to seventy five thousand somewhere in that ballpark. Only because I don't have any price of the materials or pipes, and I don't even have a materialist yet. So. And there's up to probably 13 um, uh, laterals will have to be reinstated. So we'll have to cut those off and then you chase them back up the property line until you can get gravity flow back into it. Emory's done this hundreds and, or thousands of times. So I'm not that concerned about that, but it's the conflicts, you know, like uh, water lines, power lines, those are overhead, but you know, cable, phone, Right. Stuff like that, they will have to work around. That slows it down, which of course, then the cost goes up. Now, is this going to eliminate issues? This will this eliminate belly? that belly completely. It'll eliminate any chance of a plug up and over and spill, you know, because as it gets in that belly, it settles. And every couple of years, we have to go in there and have a jet truck blast it out of there, right? Just so it doesn't settle and build up in the bottom. So, do you have a visual idea of where they're talking about? Or? No, do you want to show and then? Yeah. yeah. I think, oh, over here. So, this is uh, Pearl Street right here, and it's between Manhole 10 and Manhole 309 right here. Okay? And the belly's right in here, up to 309 and back. We won't have to go all the way back here, it's 300 and 32 feet or something like that, but we'll be in here somewhere. We're probably going to replace, we're, we're estimating right now about 200 feet of line, so maybe a little more. But Emory's got to chase it back till, the, till he gets back to elevation. So um, this is, I go, this is the area right in here. Down, so, down, on, down in Nito, this is where the condos are at down below, or right back in here. I don't know if you're familiar with that. This is a steep drop off. Okay, this is right here is where you go over the hump when you start down Pearl Street. Stays pretty level through here. That belly's right here, and then it goes over the hump. Uh, 
And then the county will be paid. So uh, uh, my discussions with Chris Lady at the county is we just have to bring it back with gravel so that and compact it so that it makes it through the winter. Then they'll come back and do all the paving. That's their part of, of this repair. So we don't have to come back in the spring and then do all the paving. So is there any other questions on that? You kind of got a visual of what I... So Dan and I have talked about it a little bit in our new SDC group of policies, whatever, is not going to be quite in place <clears throat> but we're thinking that we might be able to come in under some of the SDC money and maybe, what, 30, 30 it, percent, it, perhaps? In the methodology, it states for these type of emergency repairs, what makes it qualify under this, to my understanding, I discussed it with the legal counsel and with Deb, is because you have to have this, for this new house to hook up. And any other homes that are built there can't hook up until this is so about 35%, I think it calls out in the methodology, can be used yeah. from your SDC funds. And then the rest of it will probably come out of capital resource. So that will help out a bit. Um, Oceanside pump station uh, control module has arrived, but we have to wait to schedule the contractor in to install it and hook it up and, and calibrate it. So we're hoping sometime the end of this month, but it's a holiday month and next month's a holiday month, so the schedule is not is not written down. It's not hard yet. So um, so the treatment plant's running really well. Um, for the last four or five weeks we've had zero TSS going out, no milligrams per liter. Five, five weeks. Um, so the, the treatment plant's performing well. We had a spike of over 500,000 this month, and the treatment plant took it well, so it's, it's doing good. The uh, Wetico UV disinfection system down below, we are having PLC, which is ProLogic controllers. We are having issues. We bought a new replacement. I think I had it in here last month at $4,400. Well, the new PLC now can't communicate with the old PLC in the sanitary panel. So it's just one of those things that follows through. Yeah. Um, so we've had uh, the automation group tag, they've been up here working on it. They took, they downloaded both um, software programs. They're gonna work on it in their shop. They'll get, them, they'll get them working and then they'll come back and they'll reinstall the new software. Um, West Tech received, uh, we only received a single bid for the uh, generator and uh, manual control switch for the Oceanside pump station that we've been working on. Um, tonight I'm going to ask the board to approve it. If you look at the bid amount, uh, it came up under the uh, uh, engineer's estimate. So the white sheet, that's the engineer, engineer's estimate, that's what we budgeted for. And this sheet shows the tally, um, what the total bid is from uh, uh, Northeast Electric. So you'll see the cost of the generator, and you'll see the cost of the manual transfer switch and installation. Now the contractor is letting us know now it could be up to a year before we receive the generator the physically received generator. But what we will get are the specs on the generator and find somebody that has a, a, like, a, um, like a rental center that has one that's close to that specs okay. that will run that pump station. Well, those are estimates. I, I will tell you that uh, we had a problem most of last year but that seems to be getting less and less, so we're getting our equipment and parts sooner. Yeah. But the contractor wasn't comfortable, because he has another one he's waiting for a generator on that they did somewhere else. Uh -huh. So he's estimating up to a year, 
So there will be retainage held back for that until we actually get, uh, uh, you know, until we actually get control of it. So this seventy thousand is an estimate, or no, no. These these are hard numbers. Okay. So so what you would approve is the hundred twenty-seven thousand. Uh, backing up <clears throat> the original sheet that uh, our engineers did came back at about 195,000. Well, yes, but they, but they they had double counted the generator because they thought there was a larger and a smaller one. I think. Right? Yes, when that's when we were looking at it. They didn't double count it as much as remember we talked right. about two different size generators. Correct. They had to take the other generator off. So when I saw the 127,000, <clears> I was thinking, boy, that's really low ball from the 190 something. Uh -huh. But then when we figured it out, or Dan figured it out, it's not that far out of line. It's out of line by what, uh, around 14,000? Yeah. Which isn't too bad, but I was thinking with a sole bidder, you know, are they lowballing us to then come back and get into the project and say, you know, change one, change two? But yeah. apparently, this is consistent. Well, if if you look at the engineer's estimate, you see the second item is portable generator. They estimated sixty thousand. The bid came in at seventy thousand, which is the so main yeah. So there's something else in here. It could be labor. It could be bonds. You know, parts. That, uh, that we're not being charged much for. So, uh, <clears throat> if there's no more discussion, I'll call for a vote to accept the uh, the offer. Is there any more discussion? None. I'll move that. Okay. All in favor of uh, accepting this bid for the work, say aye. 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 So what will follow next is the, uh, the uh, engineer will send out the letter of intent to award, and then the contracts will come, and then do you want to designate the board chair to come sign the contracts, uh, or contract, I should say, for this? Is there a quick well, on this project, which was twenty million, I signed all the contracts except for the main one. The board signed the main, the board chair and treasurer or secretary signed the other one. But that's completely up to you guys. We can have John come sign it. It'll, it'll be small anyway. Yeah, that's I'm fine with that. Okay. 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 okay I will. I will notify them tomorrow. That's. That's all I have. Okay. Old business. Approve the limited English proficiency proficien plan for USDA. I know we discussed it and we thought that we would accept that. So, uh, motion to accept the languages, folks. I move. Second. Discussion. And this was the one that we don't have to pay for unless we actually call on it. Right. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Ordinance 2202. When we started the SDC project, uh, I guess we were going to do get a methodology done. I didn't know it was as complicated as it was. <laughs> I learned. Yeah. But uh, anyway, came in one day and with help from Aaron, uh, went through resolutions back to 1991 and uh, ordinances back to around 2000 and found ordinance 05-02, which was the last time 
a general process was put in place for SDCs. It was not the actual methodology of how you determine what the rates are, it was not what the rates were, and it was not what would be on the list of items that we would want to uh, have done through S SDC funds. <clears throat> so, what you have before you is uh, the first reading, and we need two readings, so there would be a reading tonight and a reading in December, and then 30 days later, per our council, Clark, it would be adopted uh, as far as the process is concerned. So, uh, I guess uh, this is the first reading. It can be changed. This is not the end of the uh, world as far as having to exactly approve it. And in fact, there's minor changes. Minor changes. Yes. In fact, there's probably a minor change in this document uh, that uh, Clark and Deb informed us of, but it's it's very minor. <clears throat> they have the uh, they have the new one. They have the new one. Okay, good. So this is the first reading. We were. Did you have a? No, sorry. No, no. I mean, you were looking that way. <coughs> I was thinking Jim may not. I might need to get Jim a copy because his it would have gone to his email, but his hard packet was delivered. Well, well, we have. Here, well, we have copies. No, we have copies. Oh no, no. no. You, you, you got just copy the ordinance. You not mine. Yeah. Here, this is better. Well, Even that's the. It's got, and I don't know, between you two, it's got the page where the change is from what you have. And I mean, maybe you can just take a quick look at it and then share it with Elizabeth. Do you have any idea what page it is? Oh, it's around seven or eight or something like that. It should be on the right hand column. There's a oh, okay. little paragraph. The whole bunch of red? Well, the red is actually stuff that was already done and is in the other copy. Those were minor edits. List versus listed, is that we're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Hers, Deb's were in blue. If there's something on the right hand side of paragraph in blue, Some of this just came in, what, today or yesterday? Yesterday. Yesterday. So. And, yeah. the, and the newest version is on the website. So there won't, okay. be, there won't be any confusion if somebody accidentally gets the old one and then they go later and read it. So everything is updated that's gone out to the public. And this is just the process of how we came up with the dollar amount? No. No? No, it doesn't include that process at all. What, uh, let me call your attention to, where's the page? Uh, okay. So, assessment on page three, under assessment of the charge. Section four. It's uh, actually under three. That says, system development charge rates, item B, shall be established and may be revised from time to time by resolution of the district. This is the document that sets forth that we can revise them from time to time. That's what this, that paragraph does. Then the next page, or not the next page, but section four addresses the methodology which can also be changed from time to time, although probably less often. Uh, <clears throat> you'll see item C under section four on page four, it talks about the same thing as far as you can change it. Uh, and then section five, item B, 
says that you can modify the projects. So, and then it talks about collecting the charge, and then it goes uh, on page five, talks about credits for developer contributions of qualified public improvements, how those are handled, and then on page seven, appeals and review hearings, if a party wants to appeal or have a review of something to do with the SDC that's being assessed, that's addressed. And then uh, page eight is review of methodology and rates, a general thought on this. And then receipt and expenditure of SDC charges is on page nine. So it's kind of the overall structure and philosophy of SDCs without getting into the three specific areas. One is what the methodology is to determine what your SDCs will be. Two, what those rates actually are going to be. And three, what your list of uh, projects are that you want to include under the umbrella of SDCs. So this was close to this. It was done in 2005, but it was 17 years old. And I thought, man, that's a long time ago. Uh -huh. So we ran it by Clark and Deb and some of the uh, statutory paragraphs have changed just a little bit, like, you know, maybe 205-7, now it's 205-8 or whatever. So this brings this document up to date and it's the overseeing umbrella document for the specifics of how SDCs are managed. I, I know it's a lot. But and this is a standalone ordinance yes. versus a state mandated? Y yes. Uh, uh, it's, well, it's, it follows the state law. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, oh yes, oh yeah. yeah. Right. You'll okay. see ORS all over the place, like on page eight, review of methodology and rates. Uh, you go down through these paragraphs, you'll see, you know, 223.309, okay. further down, yeah. 223, 297, right. 316. Okay. So it follows, it follows what's required in the state statutes. All right. That's a, one of the major points of it, so that somebody won't come back and say, well, you're not following the law. Right. right. So, and that's why Clark uh, and Deb got this project, this part of it, which wasn't really part of the original uh, methodology tasking, I guess. Well, no, it was part of it. It, it just, part, it, it's just, but be, with, with Deb, yes, it was still part of it to get to this point. Okay. So but we're getting to this point. Right. Now. What's, what wasn't part of Debs was we had to bring in our own legal counsel to review. Uh -huh. Legal counsel writes the ordinance, and then John reviewed it, I reviewed it, and Deb reviewed it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I, I really wasn't aware of it until I started digging through ordinances and resolutions, and I said, ha-ha, this is something that we're going to have to do. So. So. Dan, did, did you ever have conversations with developers or with uh, sales, real estate folks? The yeah. last one was uh, Ocean Island Syntex Development. Okay. And that's when the last uh, methodology was done, right. right? And the last ordinance was done. But you're not getting kickback, negative no, feedback? No, okay. no. It's just the sooner they know it's coming, so right. they can budget any new fees that they have to budget into their into their budgets for building home. So we this is the first reading of an ordinance adopting system development charges and. Uh, I think you said that 
really going beyond that probably provided a good deal of explanation already. Yeah. So officially, the only thing you have to read is this and this one. Ordinance number 2202, an ordinance adopting system development charges. This is the first reading. The second reading will be December 15th. And uh, that all assumes adoption on the 15th of January. Anybody have any other questions? You could just take this to the bowling alley. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> okay. So I added to the agenda the uh, final methodology report, which is going to be approved with a resolution at our December meeting. But I figured I would put it out there since there's one or two changes. What originally Deb put this together, and she had the uh, both the rates and the list as uh, part of the methodology report. But she said it would be better if uh, you put those in resolutions so that uh, <clears throat> they can be changed without having to change the methodology for determining the SDC rate. So the change to that was those two items, the uh, project list and the rates, were put in the appendices at the end of the uh, document. So you'll also find, if you look at, uh, I think, on page 2-5, the uh, total per EDU is now 13,752. On, do you have one of those handy? Or no. Uh, we can we can get to it. Yeah. Two minutes. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So the the drafts. I'm on uh, page two five. The drafts that you have seen before had uh, the total per EDU at what 14,250, mm -hmm. something along those lines. But what was included in projects that we would be working on or have worked on that shouldn't have been included was the garages back behind. Uh, here. That's totally separate project from SDCs. So when Deb took that out, it reduced this maximum by about uh, what probably four or five hundred dollars. Yeah. Because it, and it was already built. Yeah. It was, it was already, already built. It was already built. Yeah. Yeah. So and then what you will have next month. If you look at the appendices, there's the project list. And uh, let's see, I don't know. We, to, somewhere here, do we have uh, Pearl Street? It's, yeah. Yeah, Pearl Street. Reconstruction there. G2 on page A 1. And she has put in inflated cost of 101,000 and then you can see that the 32.5 percent or about 33,000 could come out of uh, our SDC fund which looking at this tonight is something over 800,000 in SDC fund yes from yeah. <clears throat> so and these are some of the other projects um, and I, I was slightly confused because I was thinking that the uh, lower uh, Avalon, Avalon uh, West, mm -hmm. was a top project. And it may be or it may not be, but it doesn't have to be the, the first thing that we do and we dump all our money into. Although Dan, I think, uh, very prudently 
is thinking that if we can get our hands on a piece of real estate sooner than later, that's positive to build that, be able to build that pump station over there. But uh, in any case, these are a number of the potential projects. And then on the last page is the uh, SDC schedule. And there you find that 13850. Now, what I wanted to do so that there was a little more clarification, if you go to 2-6, this future project list and SDC schedule adjustments, it says within the methodology that these can be changed. So say we approve uh, our project list by resolution in at our December meeting and in February we want to add some things to the list we can do that with another resolution very easily without affecting the overall methodology structure any questions Okay? Yeah. All right. Very good. Uh, the final item on the list is correspondence. And this is uh, our annual audit and the deficiencies that they normally seem to find because we're a small organization. And the only one, one and two are seem to be what we have every year that we really can't do a whole lot about except for the board providing a good oversight and uh, working with our auditor where necessary. Item three, they found one duplicate vendor payment and Aaron and Bonet came up with uh, this way of handling it, which I think is kind of slick uh, if something comes in and doesn't have an invoice number on it, they have a standard number to put on it. I don't know, JC, whether you were involved in that too. You know, but anyway, the, the front office came up with this idea that uh, it will raise a red flag because you're always using the same invoice number and you can double check to see if there has been a payment or whether it's already been processed. So I, I feel like that's a good solution and I'm ready to sign off on this letter, uh, which is timely as opposed to last year. I think we were three or four months behind and they said, why haven't you answered this from the state? Because the state gets a copy of this. Right. So if anybody has any questions, I don't know that it really needs uh, approval, but uh, more than happy to answer them, change it, or do whatever might be necessary to satisfy the state. Well, it's our first go around with the new, so. And I think, I, I don't know, but my impression from Dan is that he's rather pleased with their approach okay. and having read some of their materials it seems you know it's not to disparage our prior auditor but he was with us for a whole lot of years right. and probably the changeover is, is not a bad thing as far as looking at what goes on in the organization so all right Executive session, none.
Does anybody have any comments they want to make or talk about anything else? I still have a few minutes before I got to get Elizabeth out of here to the bowling alley. We're all good? Yeah. Then, uh, motion to adjourn? So moved. I second. Okay. All voted six in point. favor of adjournment? It's actually 620. Aye. aye. Say aye. 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 620. Well, it'll be nice getting that uh, Pearl Street issue, definitely. Uh, it's been just hanging out there for quite a while.